What is the Gospel? An Introduction to John. Part 3. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John chapter 2. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you've kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there for a few days. The Passover of the Jews was near. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, Well, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he'd said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus on his part would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone for he himself knew what was in everybody. In John chapter 1, we water skied over the first four points of the Gospel. Christ is our rightful Lord. We have rejected him. The consequence of this is death. Christ has died in our place. Chapter 2 now looks 
at those last two points more deeply. Our sin or rebellion against God is not something we dare treat at all lightly. Sin and its consequences of pain, suffering and death are abhorrent to our loving holy God who created a perfect world and had it disfigured by sin. Two of the ways people of the Old Testament were taught this were very visual. Continual ritual washing and animal sacrifice. Sin is like an ugly stain on people and needs to be washed off. Sin also results in death. Animals were killed in place of sinful people. The trouble was that this was just a teaching tool. It didn't actually solve the problem of people's sin. The people like us remained sinful. All they could do was keep turning back to God as their Lord, repent, plead for his mercy and trust that somehow he would save them. Christ came to solve that problem. Christ has died in our place. John chapter 2 describes two signs Christ did that pointed towards something far deeper. First, at Cana, from gallons of water, he took a cup of wine. Now, a cup of wine is used in the Bible figuratively for God's wrath on sin. Psalm 75, verse 6. In the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed. He will pour a draught from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. Jeremiah 25.15 Take from my hand this cup of the wine of wrath, and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. Revelation 14.10 They will also drink the wine of God's wrath, poured unmixed into the cup of his anger. This cup is what was rightly ours. Christ, however, came to take it for us. For the sinless Christ to take upon himself the just deserts for our sin was truly horrific. He prayed in Gethsemane, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Christ has died in our place. The Lamb of God died on the cross for us. By trusting in what he has done for us, we are counted not guilty and forgiven, our sins covered over by his blood. What gallons of water could never in reality wash away, his blood has. In Jerusalem at Passover, Christ swept away the whole animal sacrifice system, both physically and figuratively, in the cleansing the temple sign. He replaced it with his own, once for all, death on the cross. People had just been going through the ritual of buying and selling animals anyway. But Christ added a further detail. 
speaking of the temple of his body, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The mention of three days is intentional. The sign at Cana occurred on the third day. After dying on the cross, on the third day Christ rose again. The physical temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by men, the Romans, in AD 70. The temple of Christ's resurrected body is now where we approach our God. With no sin of his own, death had no hold on Christ. By accepting Christ as our rightful Lord, we now receive, through no merit of our own, new life in him. Our sinful life has died with him, and he gives us eternal life in him. Mere religious practice and rituals get us nowhere. There's nothing we can do to somehow earn our salvation. We have to turn again to Christ as Lord, repent and trust in his totally unmerited grace. In Cana of Galilee, Christ first revealed his glory through a sign, and his disciples believed in him. Some people couldn't see it. In Jerusalem they said, what, what sign can you show us for doing this? Many people today still need to see to be convinced. John the Baptist said he'd come that Christ might be revealed to Israel. We too want people to see Jesus as we share his gospel. Christ has died in our place.